And we're ready to preach the gospel. Amen. Amen. Strongholds. We're going to talk about strongholds today. We're going to talk about taking jurisdiction. Amen. The authority that comes with the jurisdiction that you have been given. The blessing is attached to the jurisdiction you have and your willingness to take the jurisdiction that has been authorized to you and to prosper in it. And we talked about how God created Adam. He put him in a jurisdiction. He already had the garden. He prepared for him. He says, I'm putting you in here. When he breathed into him, he put him in the garden. This is your jurisdiction. Your, your job is to dress it and keep it. Somebody say keep it. Keep it. Because a, a lot of things we approach that God has given to us, we get it, and then we realize the real battle starts. Oh, it is. Hallelujah. You got the house, but now you got to keep it. Amen. 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 You got the one that you want to marry, and can you keep it together? Amen. Amen. Tell them, preach it hard, man. Preach, yeah, preach it hard. hard. <laughs> you got the job, but can you keep it? Amen. Amen. And, and so the blessing is attached to your authorized jurisdiction. If you're assigned, if you got a job at McDonald's, can't wake up the next morning and say, you know, I think I'm going to Wendy's today. Put them, you know, back when I was when I had my first sort of formal job like that, I was working at a place called Geno's. They sold Kentucky Fried Chicken all the way from Baltimore to Geno's, Geno Marquette, who is the end for the for the Baltimore Colts football team. And um, and I, I was a French fry man when I first stood there. And they used to have to wear a little hat. Uh, Gino's hat. Now, I, I couldn't put on my Gino's hat and my Gino's shirt and go uh, work in, at, at, at some other burger joint. Or just show up there. I had no jurisdiction. I had no authority. There's going to be no paycheck. There's going to be no blessing at that place. If God has given you a family, that is your jurisdiction. That is where you've been authorized to act as if you're the man, as the priest of that house. Um, and you are authorized to cast out demons. You are authorized to, to speak peace into that place. And all the blessings that come from family are due to you because you have been authorized to be in there. Amen. I had a minister at our church in Baltimore. This was before I was pastor, but the church at the time, uh, uh, Bishop Reed was a pastor. And a uh, wonderful family. Four or five kids, beautiful wife, and... Uh, one day, she comes crashing through the church door crying. What in the world is wrong with her? The, the husband, the minister, uh, he, he went upstairs to a lady that lived upstairs and moved in with her. Left his wife and family down on the, stoop, on, the on the apartment down there where he lived. And he went upstairs and decided to live with the other lady. How I many you know he wasn't authorized to be up there? Amen. There's no blessing up there. Amen. Amen. There's nothing but chaos there. Amen. Now you have two families in chaos because the person who's authorized moved out of their jurisdiction, out of their place of authority, and out of their place of blessing. Yes. Somebody say, Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. I'm preaching hard already, but turn to 2 Samuel chapter 5. I will be starting at verse 1. Then all the tribes of Israel came to David and Hebron and spoke, saying, Indeed, we are your bone and your flesh. Also in time past, when Saul was king over us, you were the one who led Israel out and brought them in. And the Lord said to you, You shall shepherd my people Israel and be ruler over Israel. Therefore, all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord, and they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 40 years. And at Hebron he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and in Jerusalem he reigned 33 years over all Israel and Judah. The king and his men went to Jerusalem against the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, who spoke to David, saying, You shall not come in here, but the blind and the lame will repel you, thinking, David cannot come in here. Nevertheless, David took the stronghold of Zion, that is, the city of David, 
Now David said on that day, whoever climbs up by way of the watershed, the feet of the Jebusites, the lame and the blind, who are aided by David's soul, he shall be chief and captain. Therefore they say, the blind and the lame shall not come into the house. Then David dwelt in the stronghold and called it the city of David. And David built all around from, my, from the Milo and inward. So David went on and became great, and the Lord of hosts was with him. Amen. Strongholds. All right, now listen. Strongholds. I started talking about this subject a couple of Wednesday nights ago, and I'm going to give you like a three-minute summary. Here in, in, in this second Samuel, um, David, once he consolidated his reign and, and had the two war groups in Israel come together, um, Israel and Judah, they both at this time decided, you're going to be the king, you're the man. And the first act after he got that, the, the groups together is he says, I need somebody to go up and take down those Jebusites that are living up there, and they have command of, 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 of this town that they call Jebus. Um, these were Canaanite people, and, and when God called Abraham, he said, what I want you to do is, and, 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 and become the father of the Jewish people, I, I'm giving you the land of Canaan. I want you to go in and take that land. The Canaanites are a group various groups that were in the land of Canaan. They had all kinds of ites there. Canaanites, Jebusites, uh, Kandazites. Uh, <laughs> it's all kinds of ites that were up there. Um, and, and their job was to go in and he says, I want you to take it because I'm going to purify that land. It was the land that had been just cursed. They had been involved in all kinds of sexual immorality of uh, the worst kinds. He said, I, I want to clean that place out. I'm giving the land to you. And uh, later, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt, Moses led them to the, the brink of the promised land, could not take them over. It was Joshua's job to take the children of Israel over. The adults, all the parents, died in the wilderness because they were a bunch of complainers, whiners, quitters, want to go back to Egypt, give up, give up on God. So he said, you know what, all of y'all, everybody over 40 is going to die out here in the wilderness children are going to go in. And so Joshua took the children in. When we say the children of Israel, he took the children in. Uh, uh, he took a bunch of young people in. The only old guy was Caleb. Uh, Caleb was 80 years old at that time, but he said, I, I want, I, I want what, what the possession that I, uh, I said we could take back when we first spied out the land. And so they went in. And I want you to hold his finger in there in 2 Samuel. But I want you to go back to the book of Judges now. That's back towards the front. A few books. <coughs> Judges chapter 1. Judges chapter 1. And this describes what was happening as they went in to begin taking these Lands. They were supposed to drive out all the inhabitants of the land. Um, whatever the kind of ites that were, that were there, um, they were to drive them out and utterly destroy them. Because if you leave any vestige of the enemy in your land, in your territory, in your jurisdiction, you can be sure you're going to have trouble. It has been the, the practice of kings uh, since time eternal that when you take over a province, you've got to kill everybody from that other royal family because if you leave somebody, somebody's gonna rise up with revenge. 